Welcome back. Let's go in depth on integers. Remember, integers are used for a whole number. They can be null, but there is no concept of an empty integer, thank goodness. Integers, just like strings, have a bunch of built in functionalities. So if you call the method double value, this converts it to a double. If you call float value, this converts it to a float. And you can even call parse int, where you can pass in a string and then convert it to an integer. So let's create an integer. I can then print out number of likes, and then I can call the dot operator and double value. You can see that this converts it to a double, and then float value converts it to a float. So I'm going to call double value. And when I run this, you can see it has been converted to a double. You can do the same thing for float on your own. Let's say instead I had a string, string. So this is a string data type, but inside of it is really actually a number. But really, I want this to be converted to an integer. So I can say integer, num likes, we'll call it, is equal to integer, then I call the dot operator, and then I call parse int, and I pass in the number of likes. And then I'll just print out the value. This converted a string data type into an integer data type. Now, luckily, whoever designed this method did a really good job. So if I pass in something that doesn't make sense, like an empty string, we get an exception. It says, this isn't going to work when your input is just an empty string. Same thing if the string is null, cannot parse null string. So start reading these messages to make sense of it all. And lastly, the same thing applies if I have a double value and it tells you your input. So this is something to think about when you start getting good at coding. When you make a method that other people are going to use, you can't just think about what if it works. You have to think about what if someone passes in something wrong. And you have to have really good error handling to handle all of the edge cases. Next up, we have integer operators. So when we talked about a string, a string only had one operator that made any sense, which was the plus sign. The plus sign for a string was concatenation. But for an integer, the plus sign ends up doing addition. And this should make sense. One integer plus another integer means you add the two numbers together. The minus operator ends up doing subtraction. The star operator does multiplication. All three of these should be incredibly obvious. The slash operator does do division. But you have to think this through. What if you have two numbers that don't divide evenly? You get some sort of fractional value. Well. This does integer division, which means if you get 0.5, well, that's a double. Doubles don't fit into an integer. So what Java does is it just chops off the last part of the value, and it just says it is 0. So it doesn't round it. It truncates it. And then lastly, we have the percent sign. This is modulo. So this gives you the remainder of division. So this can be used in conjunction with the slash or division operator. OK, let's try the operators out. Integer x is equal to 1. Integer y is equal to 2. I'm then going to print out x plus y. And then I'm going to do Command D a couple of times. I'm going to do x minus y, x times y, x divided by y, and then x modulo y. So x plus y is 3. x minus y is negative 1. x times y is 2. And then friendly reminder, this would be 0 0.5, but it's an integer, so it can't hold 0 0.5. So it truncates to 0. And then this is the remainder. after integer division. So that's why you have 1. Now I'm going to go ahead and delete these last couple of lines. 
And let's say I wanted to print something so I had some more context. So I'm going to add a string. So this is the result of addition. And then I add the plus operator. So this plus operator is for the string. This is a string. We're using the plus operator for the string. And then this plus operator is supposed to be for integer addition. However, when I run this, look what I get. I get 1 and then 2. I don't get 3. What happened is it didn't do integer addition. It forced this to a string, 1, and then it forced this one to a string, and then it just concatenated the strings. So this forced all integers to strings, then concatenated it. So how do we fix this? Well, if I add parentheses around here, now it forces it to the number 3. So what this did is it says, hey, do this first as integer addition, and then force it to a string in the rest of the print line statement. So if you start to get weird results, think about what's happening. It's converting data types on the back end. Integers have even more operators. So plus plus increments it by one, and minus minus decrements it by one. So let's try it out. So I have integer x is equal to one. I'm then going to say x plus plus. This increments it by one. I'm then going to print out x, and I get two. I can do the exact same thing, but instead I'll call minus minus. And this takes one, subtracts one, and then prints out zero. And lastly, we have even more operators. So plus equals does an add and assign. Subtract equals is subtract and assign. Multiply equals, divide equals, modulus equals. You get it. It kind of combines two operators into one. So normally, you could do integer x is equal to 1. And then you could say x is equal to x plus 2. If you print out x, you get 3. But another way of saying this is x plus equals 2. And you get the exact same result. I'll give you one more example. Let's say you had x is equal to x minus 2. You get negative 1. You could write this in the exact same way by saying minus equals 2. And you still get negative 1. I won't go through the rest of them. They're pretty obvious, but they will be on the homework. And just FYI, there are more operators that apply to integers, but we're going to cover them later. This is a really good start. Okay, and as always, do the homework. There's going to be a lot. Good luck.